space makers and art appreciators to the art space podcast brought to you by lemon street gallery and art space located at 4601 sheridan road swing on into your favorite citrus themed art gallery do it do it we're here for you yes you got art and for your eyeballs yeah treats for the eyes i guess yeah treat your eyes that's that's our message today okay treat your eyes yes stop on and in. everything Treat yourself. Yeah, buy yourself some art, um, some local art. But either way, um, I am your host, Shelby Nesmith. And I'm Jay Coy. And today we are going to be chit-chatting with um, Al and Toy from Gates of Divinity, um, which is a saga of books. Indeed. So, awesome. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Thank you again for having us. Yeah, yes, no thank you. Yes, no problem. Um, we got authors on the show today, guys. Yeah. Writing. It's art. Literature. Yeah. Split it's... it for audio. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is our first author for a while. I know. It's been a minute. Um, Aaliyah. Oh, was gosh. That was like episode five. And then the oh. book festival we did where we interviewed a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, that's where we met you guys. Yeah. The first time. Yeah. And we said, sorry, we already packed up our equipment. You, you we did. can't have you on that yeah. one. So we'll have you on a real the one. The rain was just... Yes that first this was one. a year ago now <laughs> yeah. almost almost a year worth yeah. the yeah. wait totally, yes. totally. Yeah. Yes. yeah so yeah unfortunately the rain kind of kicked us out and gave us a tiny time frame so we've been there yeah so uh yeah don't want your books getting wet <laughs> so don't worry i looked at him and said don't worry they'll be back <laughs> <laughs> we'll get he did we'll get he did tell me that in that exact voice and i was a little terrified <laughs> as you should be <laughs> Stay, so. stay in the state of fear. Yes. <laughs> you guys are mainstays at the Kenosha Book Festival, I believe. Right? We are. Yes. Mm-hmm. Have you been to every one? Every one. Yeah. Not to uh not to discredit anyone, uh, <laughs> or even maybe steal Donovan's thunder, but I kind of feel like we're we're like his best friends. Oh, okay. okay, gotcha. Maybe maybe his go to's for, for cool people. Gotcha. That's good. Nice. Yeah. I would say you're put you're an asterisk his... on that, by the way. <laughs> I would say you're his interns, but I know he has his he own does. interns yes. that they're, are they're yes. very much established. They're quiet, mm-hmm. but very uh, mischievous. Check out his uh, social media. Yes. That's uh, Studio Moonfall, Donovan Shearer's Studio Moonfall, for more information on his uh, interns. interns. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. You'll, you'll see. Yeah. The the jiggly win- the interns. I didn't realize how squishy they were, but hey. I've never, you've, have you touched one? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm jealous. Yeah. You Gosh. let me squish it because it like had a hole and yeah, it was wow. very squishy. But either way. The people have no idea what we're talking about no. right now. Or yeah. like, why are we squishing interns? <laughs> these, yes. these poor people are These college wide. students that aren't getting paid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, I'm with the audience on this one. <laughs> Need more context. But yeah, go check out Donovan's stuff and you'll you'll totally understand what yeah, we're talking about. We're not about. gonna spoil it. Yeah. So I go um, see Donovan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into questions, um, how are you guys doing today? Uh, doing good. Yeah. Doing good. good. Yeah, much Feel, better. Feeling a little overworked from our day jobs, but I mean uh, uh it doesn't matter how tired we are, we, we seem to have a drive that I don't know. Can't uh, squash motiv- it. Motivates us yeah. to, to keep yeah. this uh, our, our dreams alive and to pursue this endeavor, no matter how hard. It's just uh, we kind of chalk it up to like this is how we pay our dues. Oh. You know, one day when we hit success, and maybe we'll have the opportunity to inspire other artists or writers and say, hey, you know, if it was easy, everybody would do it, but it isn't. You got to pay your dues. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the time, and it's it's a it's a it's a difficult journey. Oh, and, yes. and then they look at us like, well, if they could do it. No Especially us. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, These two yokels can do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, doing real good. Uh, happy to be here with you guys. Doing this kind of stuff uh, is uh, something we always look forward to. Uh, almost as much as writing mm-hmm. uh, is getting out there and talking with other people and, you know, sharing our story. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Love, we love that kind of stuff. Well, awesome. I'm glad we can have you on. Yay. Yeah. So we'll we'll launch in with our pre-question. Oh. Yes. Usually Shelby asks this question. You mean because the question she... before the question? Yes. yes. We have a we have a question before the, the ones on paper. Pre- oh, pre-boarding. Got it. Don't worry. Yes, it's pre-boarding. Crazy. <laughs> you want me to get on the plate before yeah. I get on? <laughs> yeah. We like to start by asking, how do you how do you classify your guys' work? Like um, what uh, genre or uh, what movement do you I, I prescribe guess, to? Well, I mean, uh, as far as that goes, I say like, like as far as like this particular project, it definitely falls under fantasy and uh, 
I'd say even a little bit of thriller. It, it has a little bit of everything, it if I'm being honest. It does have like you no know, a few moments where you get a little bit of comic relief. You no, know, there's even a, a little bit of romance. I mean, we 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 didn't we we don't want to like uh, uh, define ourselves, ourselves or restrict yeah. or define ourselves with one particular medium. So, uh, but as far as like a whole from a broader spectrum here, if we're uh, no, we 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 have a list of book ideas that we still have planned once we finish this saga, and we're not. St- staying exclusive to any one genre right. i feel like that's the man tell you know you're limiting yourself you no know, if you have a good idea i don't feel like you should have to fall within limitations of oh well if it's not fantasy then we can't do it no well, why who, who's, who said that's a rule we've we've uh, got a lot of interest in the the shows and in, in the our battle plan i guess for books that we have you know in store for the future nice so uh, kind of exploring it all and then just yeah. kind of taking it all in. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like you know, uh, if 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 we can create a good energy, no matter what the topic, I don't see where the the problem is. I, it's it, it's still it's still good entertainment, and it's still uh, good work. You know, it's like as long as you don't, uh, I guess, uh, reduce it to something less, mm-hmm. right? Then no. As long really as it's authentic, then it, go exactly. for it, and but, whatever comes out of it comes out yeah. of it there's always a good story to tell oh and, yeah yeah you know, and, and that's the thing too if, if 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 it's a good interesting story it should definitely be told it doesn't it shouldn't matter what genre it is okay absolutely yeah, yeah this one gates of divinity broad like he said broadly fits under fantasy but yeah there's there's adventure uh the first book has a, a real thick layer of like angel spy game mm-hmm. uh there's horror elements a gotcha. uh, little bit of a Forbidden romance, you know, there's a little bit of everything for everyone. You know, it's like a three ring circus. You know, you know, like the clowns juggling over here. Well, there's the lion tamer over here. Yeah, you know? uh, so. gotcha. Awesome. A little bit for everyone. A little bit for everyone. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Everyone gets a piece of the pie. That's right. <laughs> and who doesn't love pie? Yes. <laughs> oh man, now I'm hungry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a break real quick. Yeah. Pie. Yes. Pie break o'clock. You know, and I, I gotta say, I think for us, uh, a big inspiration is that. Uh, when we started this, no, we we didn't really go in with uh with outlines of what we should be limited to. Uh, we we kind of went in and we definitely wanted to just go full throttle without saying, well, we shouldn't do this or we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't have this in the story. That we we wanted to explore everything and just have a smorgasbord of of everything that that could make a good story. Because uh, I feel like uh, no, maybe that's. A professional thing it could be I, I don't know i don't we're not professional writers. <laughs> we, we have, we've had no formal training in this but the fact matters uh we had a great idea to work with and we wanted to explore every avenue with the story gotcha yeah, well sounds awesome. up pretty good yeah yeah perfect well awesome um so now we can launch into our official question here so um yes yes the ones on paper <laughs> <laughs> So our first question here is, uh, what got you into writing um, slash art, and what are some of your earliest memories with art and literature? Okay, so uh, really, uh, it really started when I was a child. Um, I, I somehow just, it started with me just doodling one day. My my mother just kind of supported me to maintain that habit of just, of creativity, and it grew into me becoming an artist and pursuing an art scholarship. Uh, however, those those ambitions were quickly dashed after ten years of art lessons. The last art teacher I had, she uh, she she uh, projected some racist ideals on me uh, to influence me as an artist, and I didn't agree with that because I believe art is self-expression. There are no rules as to what you should or shouldn't create. Mm-hmm. But she was real adamant that I would never be a successful artist if I didn't uh, do pictures of black people. Okay. And not that I have an issue with that, I don't. Mm-hmm. But she said that should be the only thing I create, and I'm like, no, I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create other pieces of art that are unrelated to that. Well, she's like, well, I will make sure you never see a scholarship ever. Oh, okay. And that put an end to uh, my art, uh, my art ambitions. And uh, lately, I, I kind of started picking it up again because I want to create original art for the saga. Mm-hmm. I'm working on the first piece right now, but uh, after that, you know, I. Uh, and I, I, I still remain involved in art. I was in a theater company for a while because uh, I, I love the performing arts as well. And I tell you what, there's no, being on a stage is pretty exhilarating in front of an audience. It's, it's awesome. My, my 
Walter can can vouch for that. He's been <laughs> he's performed for live audiences as well, and it, it's awesome, you know. And as far as the uh, the writing goes, this was a uh, an endeavor that started uh, back in uh, 2009. Wow. Uh, my wife, she had a dream one night, and uh, she told me about it. it. Was just I was just so fascinated. You know, I I was. I was like a little kid during story time. That's how good this dream was. And I told her, like, man, someone should write that and turn it into a movie. And she said, uh, hey, dork, why don't you write it? I, I just told you the story. I was like, oh, and that's where Gates of Divinity came from, was a dream my wife had back in 2009. But this, this saga is so epic. I started writing it, and I, you know, it was so hard to write it, you know, in order chronologically, you know, because you know, you 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 got an idea of the story, but there's a lot of things in between where you gotta create these fillers to create a bigger story, and I was really struggling with that. So you know, like, okay, well, no, the things that I can think of, I'll go write those down. Notes. So I was writing these chapters out of order, and it just it went on ice because we were moving around a lot. I was in the army, um, and I got out, and. It, it, all that stuff was in storage where I couldn't, I didn't have enough money paid to get my stuff out of storage oh, no. from the movers for several years. And then eventually I did. And by the time I was like, you know, I'd been away from, from the project so long that it was like a whole new project all over again. But I really felt an urge to, to complete this. I, it's something I started so long ago and it, it needed to be finished, but I knew I needed help. And I, I just quit working for the government and I took on a new job as an inventory supervisor. And uh, that's when I met Al. And we're, 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 you know, we're, we're both uh, inventory supervisors. And I, we got to work a lot together. And it's just like, I got along with this guy so great. And I was like, definitely share the same energy and the same interest. And just, you know, it was just so easy to be around him. And just like, you know, and it, one day I was like, you know, I feel like this was no coincidence. No, no. <laughs> We, we crossed paths for a reason. And I, I approached him one day and I said, hey, uh, I got a book idea and I could really use help writing it. You, <laughs> would you care to join me on this endeavor? And mm -hmm. it's funny because it, I thought for sure, like, he probably said, he's probably say, oh, I got to think about it. Or he might, he might not even get back to me. Like, oh, I, I'm just being no, nice to this dog. guy, you know? <laughs> but it was great because like without missing beat, he's like, yeah, absolutely. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And so, I mean, it, it, I mean, uh, maybe it was or maybe it was just luck, but I gotta say, uh, what it felt feels like is that this happened for a reason. It really does for me. It does, you know. Uh, and so I, I'm so grateful that I get to share this journey with him. It's Aww. it's amazing, and <laughs> and it's so great because when when we write together, I, you know, I I can't help but feel wonder how many people have uh, taken on a partnership with like maybe a close friend or even an acquaintance uh and it, no just opposing views have may, may have destroyed that uh business relationship or whatever and uh you, you know i feel like you don't hear too many success, success stories i'd say one of them would definitely be Eastman and I, but even they kind of drifted apart for a while mm -hmm. um but what i like about us is that when we write uh if we do have an opposing view we don't dwell on it no and we don't try to force it back and forth we don't have a we don't have a back and forth at all we kind of if we can't come to an agreement to one or the other we decide okay we're not going to use either of those ideas <laughs> yeah. we need to come up with an idea that's better than both of those ideas uh -huh. oh. Oh, nice. and you know sometimes we come up with one pretty quick and sometimes it takes an hour or two but the fact matters we don't walk away from each other without having something solid to write down nice and uh and and, and so far 10 out of 10 times uh we we've come up with some better going yeah <laughs> that's, that's awesome that's, that's what we're going with yeah. and we're both just so excited about the new idea Aww. and it's it's been a, a a great uh method that 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 we've uh initiated and it's 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 i'd say it's one of our most successful uh attributes oh nice totally. yeah i agree um yeah. so for me mm -hmm. uh i was always big into art in school um i don't really want to toot my own horn, but I thought I was pretty good. Okay. Um, I didn't. Um, I didn't pursue it as um, aggressively as Toy may have. I didn't get a, a scholarship or anything, which uh, I feel terrible that his didn't work out because mm -hmm. he is really excellent at at, at artistry. Um, he probably doesn't give himself enough credit, but I've I've seen a lot of his work, and I 
I, I, you know, as he's mouthing words of <laughs> I, my, per, my peripheral, I can see that he's just, uh, someone, mm -hmm. someone's got to be a, a fan. So that's me. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. but, uh, also, uh, writing was also another one of my interests in school as well. And, uh, in the background, you know, uh, as we discussed earlier, wrestling was always a passion of mine, um, as with one of your previous guests that we've met yes. in a similar way. Oh, gotcha. Immediately previous guest. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, um, Shout out to David. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, so that's how we, uh, him and I kind of met um, that way. While he pursued um, his film interest, I continued with wrestling and um, and started my own promotion in Kenosha. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a TV sh uh, show at the old <laughs> Spectrum before that Yep. Before that went away, sorry, no, talk with my hands and no, I just yeah, knocked okay. things around. So. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I better sit on my hands. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we had our own weekly show, um, obviously, as a as a wrestling show goes, uh, mm -hmm. at the studio down there. And uh, I wrote all those episodes. So it was a lot of, um, I know the, the, the F word is throwing around fake, which I, I'm not <laughs> here to, I'm not here to uh, uh, push that, that at all, but definitely not gotcha. fake. But it is. You know, you know, if, if earmuffs if you don't want to hear this, but it is predetermined, mm -hmm. and the, you know there are characters that are scripted. So uh, I took a lot of what I learned in school to uh, for that to uh, continuity, character development, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, so yeah. that's a uh, creative process it that is, people it, don't think about. It is huge, so. and um, especially with that, you got to main, you know. I, I don't again want to toot my own horn, but I felt like with the this is a place to toot it. <laughs> toot it. All right, all yes. right, get rid of him in a honk, real loud. Uh, <laughs> but uh, with you know other competing uh, promotions there, I felt like we had the most cohesive uh, storylines that you could go back years and be like, oh, that's where that started. That's why he's like that now. It's been going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then when Spectrum was bought out and they closed that down, we weren't for there anymore. Uh, so fast forward years later, uh, as Toy said, when we met, he presented this project to me and, and writing being one of my big passions. I'm like, hell yeah, let's, mm -hmm. let, I, I'm, I'm all in, you know? And this was near the end of 2019 where he brought this to me. And of course, a few months later, pandemic happened, COVID, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. shut everything down, which I guess for us was a blessing in disguise that it allowed us a little bit more extra, extra free time from our day job to... Uh, brainstorm this project and really mm -hmm. get the first book going. Uh, luckily, with that, it allowed us to get the first book brainstorm written and published in like four months. Like we gave oh, ourselves, wow. we started in June of 2020, and we're like, "All right, we need the final draft." Like we set, we, we set a goal for the first book. Everything else has been like, "I donh, don't get that when it gets done." Yeah. <laughs> but the first book, we're like Halloween of this year. This is when we want the final draft ready to go, mm -hmm. and we barely made. I think we we put like the final touches that on. October 30th. Oh, so boy. you're we, getting we, your costume on. Yeah, oh, I yeah. got to finish you know, this. <laughs> like, hey, what, what do you think about this? I'm, oh, I'm putting on my makeup here. Yeah. I'm going to, to the I'm store to, to buy candy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be the Joker this year. So, um, and that's, that's kind of, you know, that uh, leads us up to where, where Toy had, uh, had told you where mm -hmm. we're at. And then um, from then, we started uh, in almost a couple months later, we started writing the second book. Well, actually, no. I think we started writing the second book in the process of like editing the first. Uh -huh. Like we like, like we had a couple of ideas for the first chapter, but uh, otherwise we really started kicking it off a little bit later. Had that one ready to go, and uh, about a year later, about November of twenty twenty one, and yes. and then from then we you know we take our break and then uh, we go back and start writing again. Uh, with the story, obviously it'll be four books, but we. With us, we kind of explain it. We know where we're where we wanted to begin, basically where the story is going to end. Everything else in the middle, we develop as we brainstorm. So it's gotcha. we we kind of describe it as uh, waiting for like the next episode of your favorite TV show. Like, oh, mm -hmm. what's going to happen next week? You know, oh, is the Mandalorian is he is Mando going to get the baby Yoda back? You know? <laughs> so that that's kind of how we, we it keeps us energized. Keeps you know it's. Almost like we're reading our own story for the first time. So, okay. Okay. I'd, and I'd like to add a little context to that basically yeah. was like because you know uh, we're writing this story together, so it's not a uh, us you know looking at the same screen and taking turns pushing the keys. No, what we do is uh, we develop a a, a, a chapter plan, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't not for the whole entire book, just maybe like the first ten chap or the next ten chapters, because you know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. And we'll, we'll, we'll no, we'll we'll come with like you know. Like 
the next ten chapters, what we're going to have happen, and then we put it down. We you know we 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 save the ideas, and then we go through and go okay, uh, because you no, know, we'll we'll take charge of the different story threads within the book, and so like, well, I've been working on this character for this while, so I'll I'll do those chapters, and then you know you've been you've been going pretty strong with the, this other story thread, so why don't you just keep on going through with that? No, and sometimes we'll switch like, hey, you know what? I'll take over that story, and then like, yeah, yeah well, you know, I'll take that one. And the, but the thing is, like, uh, it was so great, and and we've we had this verified by uh, our some of the beta readers we chose. Like, hey, who wrote what? I can't tell the difference. <laughs> and oftentimes when we go over it too, we can't we can't remember. Hey, did you write this or did I write this? I don't remember. You know, I don't know. Uh, but it's really good. Though. And, and, and <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, that's that's really a blessing for us that we can write anything, and it's like our writings coincide so well together that you can't tell us a part about of who wrote what you know you, there's no way you can go through any one of these books and go i can tell toy wrote this part or i can tell al wrote there's you're you're, you're gonna be guessing forever and gotcha. you know and if you come to ask us <laughs> no oftentimes we're, no there might be like a few things where oh yeah i do remember writing that but there's mm-hmm. a, a lot in these books where we look at it and go yeah, I don't remember which one was wrote this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but the thing is, like, when we take charge of these different story threads that we got going on inside within the saga itself, um, no, what uh, what we do is once we whenever we finish chapter, because we 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 we're in constant communication to make sure that all the data for the book is com- completely up to date for both of us. So as soon as I finish writing chapter, I email it to him. As soon as he finishes writing chapter, he emails to me, and we both store it in our folders so that we always have each other's work together nobody's mm-hmm. ahead of anybody unless oh. you're in the process of writing it and and that's just mm-hmm. the thing because like like for example i'll finish writing a chapter and but i'll need his chapter in order to write my next chapter mm-hmm. uh-huh. because maybe the characters cross the path i'm not yeah but even so like a lot of times like when he's writing story threads even if 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 i'm not depending on his chapter i'm just like I can't wait to find out what happens next. <laughs> like, what's gonna happen? Oh, what's gonna happen to him? You know? like, we, we, we. I mean, and and, and I don't say this uh, like uh, with any conceit or arrogance, but w- both of us were big fans of our own story because yeah. it's like we're watching our own, like someone else's TV show, but and we're writing it. That's mm-hmm. what's so weird about. But you know, I'll be waiting for him to send in his next chapter. I'm like, I can't wait to find out what happens to that character. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh God, it's been two days. I don't think I could stand. <laughs> and I, I know, and he's come forward too and said the same thing. He's like, man, oh, I know, I know. Sometimes, you know, you're you're taking on extra work at uh, at work to get some extra hours. But I tell you, it's like, yeah, are you close to finishing the chapter? Because I need to know what happens. <laughs> come on, yeah, got me on. Give me a taste. Seat. Come on, like, Saturday. Can you hold on to Saturday? Saturday afternoon, I'll have it. I'm literally on pins and needles right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny because you don't hear of a lot of duos writing. It's so very hearing you guys talk about it makes me think: Why aren't more people doing like team writing? Like it sounds fun and if a, nothing else. And a, you know, another add to add context onto his context adding, um, I, with not only do we you know divvy up story threads or characters for our chapter plan as we as we map it out, but uh, for big um, big story events in the book. Where, where we both kind of like, oh, I really want a piece of that. And he, well, so do I. So we kind of developed, I mean, we may not have even invented it, but I'm going to go ahead and say we did. <laughs> something, we <Go> call, <laughs> so, something we call relay writing, something to a relay race. So if it's a big um, a big event, we'll, we'll flip a coin or we'll be like, oh, you want to start or I'll start, whatever. Rock, paper, <laughs> scissors, however. And then we'll do a page or so at a time where, you know, up to a certain point so that we get all the, the idea in our head out. Mm-hmm. And then we'll send it to each other, and the other one picks up where the other one left off oh, for that chapter. It's kind of like doing the improv, where it's like, yes, yes. and yeah, yeah, yeah and, and then just and, volley and, back and exactly. forth. Exactly, yeah, and awesome. we'll relay back and forth like four to five, sometimes even six yeah. times, just back and forth, and and without really, I mean, we we'll discuss what we want the chapter to be about, but we leave the fine details to each other. Mm-hmm. So that right. when when we when we get the relay back, you no, know, we we have to read each other's work and go, and then and and. Like one of the fun parts that we really enjoy doing is like when we f- when we get to the end of our, our the, the relay we're on to pass it over, we try to create a nice setup. Yeah. For mm-hmm. the, for for each other, so that when when we go to pick it back, we're like, uh, oh, perfect, thank you, awesome, <laughs> yeah, got this, nice, and then, nice and ball. And then you know, and then you, you get Ready to the end, you're like, it. don't worry, buddy, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I got set up. <laughs> and then send it back to him, you know. And so it's it's a lot of fun, and I I honestly. Uh, logically, I would have to say I think the reason maybe the reason you don't see a whole lot of writing duels 
is because I think maybe ego gets in the way. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, no, we don't. We we don't fight or argue about who gets credit for what. We we distribute the credit equally. Like I don't go and say, "Oh yeah, you know," because it, no, I'm the one who came with that. It's it's really mostly me. I don't. No, I mm-hmm. I tell. I was like, "This is fifty fifty, dude." Mm-hmm. Like like, this wouldn't exist without you. So yeah, you get you no. Know, you deserve just as much credit as I do. This is not a me thing. This is not a you thing. This is an us thing. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. and until the until the end of time that's what our our statement's going to be is like no it was an exclusive me i know and it wasn't excuse him but no there, there's no way i would have done this by myself and there's no way he would have done this by yeah. himself so mm-hmm. there's no way this would have been reality without us supporting each other awesome uh, and i and i think that's i lend credibility to that that we don't allow our egos to destroy something that's so amazing oh Oh well, yeah, that's no, so and, and, and I, I think, I think <laughs> and I think just maybe that might no. I think there's been plenty of attempts at uh, a teamwork with this type of project. It just it never it probably never works out because you got one person that just wants to be in the spotlight more than the other, mm-hmm. you know, and doesn't want to share that spotlight. Maybe. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, well, and, keep it up. Yeah. We're rooting for you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> because what you're doing sounds really cool. Like just the process of it and how. Um, Kind of intertwined your your writing voices are in between them it just sounds really really cool so yeah, thanks. yes Thank keep you. on doing it keep on keeping on and yeah. that brings us to our next question yes <laughs> all right so who are some of your influences on your writing art everything like that who are, who are your influence well i guess uh the obvious one of the obvious answers would be like my wife apparently because she's the one that said, uh, <laughs> you write it if, duh. She, if she's listening she's probably hoping that she would be the first person mentioned oh, yeah. <laughs> no, so, but, and, and, and she's been supportive all the time and i gotta say uh it, you know between work and and this book it does consume a lot of my time mm-hmm. uh but uh i'm grateful that i have such a strong woman by my side that supports this endeavor and 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 she's always encouraging me even not and like anything else uh in life you know you're going to have times when you're frustrated or some things aren't just turn out the way you want to and things can it can get very discouraging and she's always in my corner saying no you've come too far you can't you can't yeah. stop here mm-hmm. you gotta keep it. i was like i know but no and she's like hey don't worry we're mm-hmm. we're here for you and it's like you it. have yeah. you you have a strong support system there's you have no excuse to fail at this keep on going you know, it's like you're you've done so much already what's a little more yeah you know? uh but as far as uh as, as far as like um uh inspirations outside of my my life uh i've always been a fan of uh author well who's not a fan of stephen king i sure. think that's oh, just, yeah. i think that's just a given i don't even think i i really need to everybody loves Stephen king who doesn't and yeah and i know i've read enough of his books to definitely be a fan uh outside of uh i say i'd say that i'd say probably ari salvatore uh i'm a big fan i got to meet him and Ooh. i got an autographed book from him which had me on cloud nine for like two years i, I just uh, i almost created a shrine for his book <laughs> ari salvatore he's the writing god i love you too singing, but sorry i didn't get to meet you <laughs> but uh and uh, i i'm also a big fan of pierce anthony uh like uh when i was in the army my captain came to my barracks room, which was like, like this is this is an unheard of thing, an, a commissioned officer coming to a lower enlisted barracks room, you know. But <laughs> uh, but he, you know, it was like it was a few weeks beforehand. No, just it was like just kind of in passing, like, hey, he's like, do you like books? Like, yeah, sure, I love books. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't? Well, <laughs> Probably a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of I, I, I was young. I was in I was in, I was in my early twenties, you know, but. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it, but then I found out, no, he, uh, we were having a change of command because he had some, uh, personal things going on in his life, some very detrimental stuff, family stuff, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, his marriage was falling apart and mm-hmm. his career wasn't going very well. So he was being reassigned. I don't know where it's like, it's always kept hush hush when it's, you know, the upper echelons of, uh, mm-hmm. of politics. Uh, but before he left the unit, he stopped by my barracks room and gave me uh, Pierce Anthony's Incarnations of Immortality, which is seven books. He uh-huh. says, you said you like books? I brought you some books. No, I want you to have these. Mm-hmm. I'm like, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And then like, just as fast as he showed up, he was gone. 
Wow. Understandably so. No, mm-hmm. no, a fraternization is a big offense in the military. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I looked at like weird, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Pierce anything? Mm-hmm. Never heard of the guy. Whatever. But you know, <laughs> yeah, and all it took is one day for me to be like, I don't know what to do today. And it wasn't honestly, it wasn't even that long after he gave them to me. Like a few weeks later, I was like, I was staring at these books that were still in the same spot where I put them down in my barracks room. I was like, let me check out these. And and I couldn't put them down. Oh, you mm-hmm. know, and it's definitely his his saga of the incarnation mortality. I want to say do have some influence on our saga as well because like what's so cool about his books is, uh, I mean you can't we you can't do that with our saga. Ours is chronological, mm-hmm. but with him, you can read his books in any order and still oh. be completely <laughs> in the loop of the story. Mm-hmm. But it was really cool. But his book also deals with gods and and mm-hmm. uh, incarnations and 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 stuff like that. So, it, no, I, I definitely think about his books sometimes when I, when I read our our stories too. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah. And wow, wow, wow. Sorry. And I <laughs> also want to put out there J.R. Tolkien. Also, oh, dear. oh, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, an obvious one like Stephen King, but <laughs> right. I, I, I <laughs> throw it in there, though. It's like, I love J.R. Tolkien. 100%. But you hit the ground running with the sentimental one, so I'm going to go real yeah. conceited. I, <laughs> I've got no one, just me. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, yeah, Stephen King and um, other authors like uh, Tom Clancy, with you know, uh, and but uh, I guess really like H.P. Lovecraft, oh sure, um, yeah, and Clyde Barker with their kind of dark macabre. And, you know, what really I enjoy is the description and the highly detailed, and that's something I feel like we we adapted into um, into our story as well. Which is not uh, speaking with any bias or anything, but it's we've we've been told that uh, that's one of the biggest you know positives about our stories that how detailed we are with characters and environments and and uh everything going on in the story so uh, uh, picking up a lot of that um from those those authors i, I feel are, are are key uh and obviously the authors that toy mentioned as well and outside of um traditional authors uh other inspirations i would say kevin smith um mm. is a big especially with the whole diy believe in yourself bet on yourself yeah. type of thing yeah, as, yeah. as something that we um are, are big proponents of obviously um uh, that with everything we do, we, we kind of do with ourselves or, or, you know, friends or close, you know, uh, close people or the community, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of building up something separate from the world. You know, as we kind of pointed out that a lot of people that start this kind of endeavor in this journey want to fall in the footsteps of, uh, you know, for example, Stephen King. Oh, what did he do? Oh, he did this, 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 this. Well, I'm going to do that, that, that. And mm-hmm. we're like, well, we could do that and be in the same place or we could do it our way and make it different make it unique mm-hmm. um and so he you know kevin smith has, has kind of uh you know uh, been an inspiration in, in that aspect obviously we're two different uh genres of of art but uh definitely you know his work has been very much a inspiration for for that kind of what we're doing oh, so. nice um so kind of dovetailing with <clears throat> that previous question um because you talked about some of your favorite authors and everything, but um, who are your favorite authors like locally? Um, anyone you want to shout out or Donovan Sure. Oh, oh yeah. I've heard of him. <laughs> He's uh, I I have a shrine to him. In, in oh. No, um, how many uh, beans? Right. Uh, um, but uh, I'm all kidding aside. Uh, I do greatly appreciate uh, and and admire uh, everything Donovan has done. Um, mm-hmm. for himself and then you know selfishly what he has uh, helped with us mm-hmm. uh, when we first started with the first book we were kind of uh, you know feet to the pavement out there promoting ourselves and we just uh, from one one place to the other we you know we bounced around and then at one place we're like oh hey there's this bookstore downtown studio Moonfall. Uh, he's very big into uh, independent authors mm-hmm. so uh, I think it was like January 2021 or whatever so we you know, the slush covered streets of downtown Kenosha, we <laughs> sloshed our way into the store. There's you that know. description, you guys. Yes. Right? <laughs> um, and the, 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 the snow and sleet was pouring, <laughs> you know, uh, at a yeah. 45 degree an- angle and blinding us. But once we walked in, that little bell, and you're like, where, where are we? You know, it was like Kevin, like Kevin McAllister in Home Alone 2, and he went to the mm-hmm. toy store in, in, the, in Home Alone 2, lost in New York. 
Um, <laughs> it's weird. I think it more like the beginning of the first Gremlins movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe that's how I. Maybe that's how I should have felt because that, <laughs> that, that his story is very much more like the the story in, in Gremlins. But um, <laughs> so you know, we we struck up a conversation with Donovan. We we gave him all our information in our book and gave him the spiel. We did, yeah. and and he kind of rolled his eyes and said, "Get out of here! I don't got time for you. Oh. I've got culling books to do." <laughs> no, uh, no, he was very supportive and uh, kind of struck up a really cool. Um, I'd like to think we're friends. I don't know if he if he agrees, but um, that, you know, it's really excited. It probably is. We're, we're just we're just fangirling over Donovan. He's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. but um, you know, from, yeah, you know, from that point on, uh, he's been very supportive, and and um, uh, as, as we spoke earlier, we've been kind of mainstays with uh, a, a lot of the uh, events that he does. You know, he he would do uh, solo author events. Um, at a store and then it, that kind of evolved and he still does those but that evolved into the council book festival which last year was one day and then this year was six you know mm -hmm. uh six days throughout the spring slash summer up through september and we've been a part of that and it's um it's it's a great learning experience for us um not only you know being able to speak with complete strangers about our book um getting them involved and then also learning from other authors that are with us there and just kind of like picking things like, oh, that's a cool idea. Take that, you know, <laughs> yeah. we'll borrow this and then put it into our, our repertoire. And so um, I, I do uh, appreciate and admire and am inspired by a lot of uh, everything that Donovan um, has done. And a lot mm -hmm. of the authors that we've met too, uh, too many to name, like there's been like 20 at every every festival and there's sometimes are a rotating cast. So if mm -hmm. you are part of that book festival and you're listening, um, we also are very much inspired by your journey as well that it's it's cool to see that there are others in the trenches with oh, yeah. and, I, and i'd like to add to that it's like you know it's like uh with the consistency of us uh doing these uh or attending these book festivals to promote our own books uh i gotta say like you know we've gained familiarity with a lot of the, the uh, local authors as well and it's i gotta say like you know at first it's like you know like the first day of school you know mm -hmm. you don't really know but it's like you know we've we've done enough times now to where you know we we're recognizing the other authors there and it's like it's it's really turning into a, a a pretty cool reunion with with uh what's turned out to be future friends and yeah. and I, I dare say like it's even starting to take on an energy of family almost uh -huh. yeah. it's like a summer camp you yeah. know like every year you go back it's like oh look sean's here yay, yay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to be part of this summer camp, you can come on <laughs> August 27th for yes. the next one. That is yes. chapter five. Chapter Ooh. five. I That's love that he calls them chapters. Two, two <laughs> chapters left to go. So we got chapter five and then six will be the last one for the season uh, in September. So I don't yeah. have the date of that one written That's, down. but well, it, It's the last Sunday of September. Last Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't have it off the top of my head. But <laughs> yeah. You can figure that out. Yeah. Person yeah. at home. Yes. <laughs> As you're already checking out his Facebook page yeah. and socials. Right. You'll what, find it on there. Scroll right down to that bottom right corner, pull up the calendar. Yeah, yes, I, I dare say it. you might be able to find a trace of Donovan on social media. I think he has a social media presence. A uh, just Maybe. a tiny little one. An itty bitty like Four one. different pages. Yeah. <laughs> But, but love love you donovan love you. And, and the support that you provide Indeed. and you're the indie author workhorse in the area yes. you're just supplying you're so much so. indie author sherpa guiding yes. us up the mountain <laughs> donovan this is toy you're my yoda no <laughs> well, that's so much better yeah <laughs> all right so we're going to take a quick break and we'll get back into more questions um so for the time being here's a word from our sponsor Hello, Art Space podcast fans. This is Joseph from Draw Joseph Studio. Most of you know who I am. I have this fabulous world-class draw studio up in Racine at the Racine Business Center, 1405. 16th Street. My studio is real easy to find. It's on the first floor on the east side, right inside the tunnel. If you know the Racine Business Center, it's a big, tall brick building, and there's a big Von Schrader on the east side of the building, and the tunnel's right underneath the Von. So come in the tunnel, first studio to your right, and on every Tuesday afternoon at 5.30, the gates open up, and at 6 p.m., I have a model posing. You're invited. It's free. Tip the model. Hope to see you there. And we are back. Hello. Thanks for sticking with us through that break. Mm -hmm. We got 
Gates of Divinity. Is it okay if I refer just, to you guys as just, your we're book still, series? Uh, fine. We're still, yeah, we're still here. It's, However, like, it's like you're a band. Yeah. However, once the song is done written and we move on to another book, you're going to have to refer to us by that new book, book name. name. Uh, so yeah. Don't get too attached. But Hold for, me to that. Yeah, for yeah. Now, yeah. No, I like the, we're like a band. You know, we've been mm-hmm. called that. You know, we've yeah. tried to set ourselves apart, so. Yeah, we're like a band, but with books. If oh, we yeah. if we had JR, but don't ban Tolkien. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, Sorry, I talked over that. <laughs> I was gonna say if we had JR Tolkien on, on the show, I'd be like, we have the Lord of the Rings here with us. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the, the Lord, Lord himself, yes. <laughs> like the Rock. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings. Yes. yes. Actually, you know what? Yeah, call us the Gates of Divinity. The <laughs> Gates. Yeah. Although your shirt doesn't have a the on it. it yeah, but, yeah, but, but except that's for the their subtitle. Title. Yeah. <laughs> that's guy. their official title. <laughs> Can't believe I work with this guy. <laughs> believe it, buddy. <laughs> well, we want to know what motivates you to work with this guy. What, what motivates you to create? That's our next you're question. You're I'm launching right into it. Oh, what motivates me to create? Uh, honestly, I, I think uh, everybody has that creative side I, I, th- I feel like it's just part of human nature it's just i think it just depends on the individual and whether or not they uh act on it or not mm-hmm. uh and and for me i uh, i daydream a lot i have ever since i was a little kid all the way back to my race race i can i can remember always daydreaming and and honestly maybe to to a fall to where it, it distracted me from a lot of things like school or even just important events but like oh you know i just you know, you just kind of wander off in the day, like, oh, that'd be cool. Or, you know, and, and if you're an avid movie fan like me, it's nothing just a daydream of, of your favorite scenes in movies, or especially if you just saw a movie you've been waiting to see and it's and you're blown away by it. Like, it, it, it preoccupies your mind quite a bit. And, and I think for me, that's inspiration uh, too, because I've, I've read great books, I've seen great movies, and, you know, and especially nowadays, there's no shortage of media to watch. Us uh, on streaming, online, DVD, video game consoles, or even a VCR if you still have one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one. You know, if you have a Betamax, I have questions. Ooh, <laughs> laser disc yeah. for for you older generation out there. I have a projector, a reel to reel. I have to crank it. No, wow, you <laughs> talk about taking it. Invite me over for movie night. <laughs> but, yeah. but, uh, it is low quality, and I will not help you. You got to squint. Yeah. Low quality, middle name. <laughs> but I gotta say, uh, you know, I think at, at some point I made a decision. Hey, I need to stop daydreaming, and and materialize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, take that imagination and p- make it productive. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I couldn't say specifically what the cataclysm there was, um, but I think maybe that maybe just that alone may have been part of a daydream at some point. Like, oh, how cool would it be if I was a famous writer or a famous actor or a famous martial artist? Uh, there, there was a point in time where I was uh, very active in the martial arts world, and I, I actually uh, was at a crossroads in my life at uh, one point in time. Is a uh, uh, when I was uh, at the end of my first contract with the United States Army, and uh, while I was in the Army, the on my first contract, I was uh, enrolled in a in a martial arts school. It was, uh, it was Southern style Wall Lam Praying Mantis Kung Fu. Wow! And uh, I, I mean, I was very invested, in it, very committed. I mean, I, I mean, I spent a lot. I mean, I volunteered a lot of my time to be there for the school. You no. Know, to help maintain it and clean it and help with preparations for events. And I mean, I just, I really fell in love with martial arts. And, and since then I, I, I've, I've learned f- a total of four different fighting styles already. I, I love martial arts. I think it's, it's, it's great for discipline and I love the philosophical side of things. And, and just, you know, who doesn't like to think of themselves as, as a bad Mamba Jamba. Yes. <laughs> you know, I know I do. Yeah. You know, uh, I, and yeah. and at at the end of of of, uh, of my enlistment uh, on that first one, uh, my martial arts teacher he because uh, he said, "Hey, uh, what are your plans?" I said, "Well, uh, I want to go to college uh, in San Francisco and major in uh, in uh, motion picture and video." No, I already got accepted. I had my student ID already. And he's like, I got a better idea. How about you stay here 
open up another school for me and run it. I've already set aside an apartment for you. I will pay for your business classes in college to, to, to be able to run the school independently. And I am, I guess you could call me a gambler uh, because every decision I've made in my life up to this point, you know, when I hit a crossroads, if I know what one's going to look like, there's no mystery there. I, I already know what's going to happen, you know, and despite the successes that may be in it, I always choose the one where it's a complete mystery. Because mm-hmm. if I already know what's going to happen, even if I know I'm going to hit some great successes with a lot of help from a lot and a lot of support from the right people, I can't stand the thought of leading the rest of my life going, well, what if I would have went the other way? Mm-hmm. What if I would have chose to go into the unknown? What successes would have what I've hit there. No, but it's just, the, no, I say, I, uh, one of my favorite things to say is risk nothing, gain nothing. You know? In fact, the, the problem with that is, though, is you may, may be making a great risk or nothing. You know? mm. I didn't know if I was going to be successful and I didn't know if I was going to be a complete failure. And uh, I chose, I told him, I said, sorry, you cannot change my mind. I have to know what's going to happen. And I did. I drove out to San Francisco without knowing anybody there. I, all I had was an acceptance from the college. And I got there and I offered up a, the GI, a Montgomery GI Bill for, to pay for my college and they said it wasn't enough. Hmm. And the moment they said that, I was homeless. Oh, no. So I you know I know what homeless feels like and, and you know people may think I'm callous, but I have no sympathy for people. You know, when people are like, Oh, you should help them out. They're homeless. Like, I've been homeless. I tell you what, when you're homeless, it is up to you whether you want to stay that way. Because I tell you what, I did not want to be homeless. And I did something about it. And I didn't have any free handouts. I didn't join any programs that help you go from homeless to not homeless. I did it all on my own. I went on. I found a job. I slept at a train station, so I didn't look like I was loitering. Mm-hmm. And... uh and when I had enough money, you know, and I looked for a roommate and I showed them, hey, I am employed. I, I, can, I can pay. I just, I don't have anything right now because I just moved. I have no assets. And it's just, it was a lot of, how to dice rolling in the game of life. It really was. So, you know, I, I've definitely had more than my fair share of hardships. You know, I, I've, I've I, I had some pretty scary roommates, but you know what? For me, if it meant keeping a roof over my head, I endured that that mm-hmm. that scariness. Mm-hmm. Um, and for that, I just you know, you if if you just sit on your butt and do do nothing, nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you have to you have to accept that no matter what you do, there's always a risk. And you know what? And if you fail. Uh, no, and, and and you don't make it at all, despite your best efforts. You 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 gotta accept that. Hey, hey, buddy, you you, you gave it your best. It just wasn't in the cards. Just like, you know, when I was a kid going for an art scholarship, I really thought I had that in the bag. I was literally my reputation was the best artist in all the high schools in my in, in my county. They canceled art competitions until. I graduated because they knew there was no point in having them. <laughs> now they're like, oh, Toy hasn't graduated yet? Well, then there's no point in having this competition where I know who's going to win it. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, and I, I'm not going to lie, uh, I, I feel like that should be a huge ego boost, but it wasn't because here I was missing out on awesome competitions that I enjoyed doing, mm-hmm. which I thought wasn't fair. I still wanted to do these competitions, but they canceled them because like, well, let us know when he's graduated and we'll resume these competitions. Mm-hmm. You know? Things are uh, stopping on your behalf, and it's like that's not what you want. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know. Uh, but you know, if you succeed, man, hey, put in the work, take the risk, take the gamble, you know. But don't go in there half cocked. You mm-hmm. know, know what the risks are, know what you're up against, and know that hey, good chance you might not make it, but you'll never know if you make that leap. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I. I feel real strong about this. It. A big part of my principles. It's like, yeah, you know what? I might not make the cut, but I'll never know if I don't do it. Yeah. And, and and it really applies to books. You know, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> Luckily, I have an awesome business partner and, and 
and a great friend. Someone I consider a brother. I consider Al my brother. He's my He's family. talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I mean, and I, 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 I feel that, I mean, in my soul, this, this dude is my brother. No, he's, he's had my back no matter how hard things have gotten. He's always been there to support me. You know? And when I fall short, he's there to pick me up. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, and I'm the same way with him. You know, if I see him fall to me, I'm going to be the first one there to lift him back up to his feet and say, hey, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. You got me by your side, and we're going to do this together, win, lose, or draw. You know, and I think that is a big, uh, a big element you need for success. Because you know, sure, there's things, you know, there's success, solo success, but you know what? You increase your odds of success if you have a good support system and you have people walking that path with you. you know, and and, and it should be anything anybody should be ashamed of or embarrassed about. You know. I find sometimes it's even better. It's nice to have a good conversation on a, on a walk, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm I'm always grateful. I, I really am. Aww. I really am. Uh, <laughs> and he's my best friend. He's my brother. He's my family. Aww. That will never ever change. It's a good but, motivator, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. yeah but uh, <laughs> no, uh, Phil. Inspira- yeah. You know, you ask, what's inspiration? <laughs> I feel the inspiration has to come from within. Yeah. You know, nobody can give it to you. I mean, sure, people can inspire you, mm-hmm. but ultimately, in the end, it's you that has to deliver that final inspiration to deliver. Gotcha. Yeah. TLDR, what he said. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say. <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, wrap it up. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. motivation. You know, a lot of people. Uh, you know, money, fame, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that's that's not really what motivates us. Uh, we're uh, at the at the end of the day, we're the biggest fans of our work, and that. That comes without any, again, any conceit or bias. We just really feel that this, uh, that big and unique of a story, and not to say that it's new, because it, it, it borrows from a lot of things that we were, you know, uh, paying homage to, but, um, you know, we feel that it, it should be shared with the world, because, the, uh, you know, if, if there are people out there that are fans like us that are looking for something new that, um, that uh, avoids cliches as as we have you know hardcore tried to do as much as possible you know there's no chosen one no no preteen that's failing algebra that's the white that, that, that is saving the day yeah. um you know and not to say that those are bad tropes that just, they've just been done so mm-hmm. we're we're you know we're looking to do something different and that's our biggest motivator for for that is to just get that out there is to mm-hmm. provide something new for the world you know i've you know, from being a kid, I've always been told I've, I've I, again, I'm, I'm here honking, but Go honk. um, <laughs> you know, that that I'm a, a, an entertainer. Like, there's home videos of me when I'm like eight or ten at my grandparents' house during like some summer uh, barbecue, like trying to tell jokes on their deck, and you know, I'm getting pity laughs, but I'm thinking I'm nailing it, <laughs> rocking you know, the crowd, right? You know, to uh, talent shows and school to obviously wrestling. So, and this is just another form of entertaining. And when we when we write the story, we we write it as if we're watching it on a movie screen or on mm-hmm. TV, and I think that helps us really develop it into something that you know uh, we feel that a lot of people probably would like to see something different. That's what we're doing. So uh, again, you know, a long story short, uh, to, we just want to share something new with the world. You know, kind of add our notch on the on the planet oh, in a positive way. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously starting from the ground level here with the community, um, you know, uh, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow with, you know, um, you know, find people like yourselves where mm-hmm. we're all trying to, you know, the, the rising tide lives, lifts all ships. Hey, so, um, it's one of my favorite mm-hmm. sayings. And again, it's a, you know, a cliche saying, but it, it's true in the sense that, you know, uh, you guys having a successful podcast mm-hmm. and having us on to talk about our books, it, it all, you know, we all succeed together. So uh, that's, that's something we, we, you know, we, we really strongly believe in and to the point that, you know, the, the bigger we get, the, the bigger everyone gets. So it's like yeah. MC hammer, but we're not going to go broke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I just saw something that I wanted to add to oh, yeah. what I was go. saying uh, yeah. before uh, with inspiration. And uh, I, I think digging a little deep and uh, I want to give a little context on, on myself, uh, a little more content, I guess you could say, uh, Growing up, it wasn't it wasn't easy for me. Uh, my childhood and my upbringing were, was 
extremely difficult. I dealt with a lot of abuse, a lot of, like a lot of physical abuse. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I was like, I, 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 I was raised in Germany. Oh, wow. As you see, I don't look very German <laughs> and I looked even less. So as a kid, okay. you know, I was very dark skinned, looked very Asian. And, uh, there was a l- lot of racism uh, every day. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I used to get chased home literally every day. I was never fast enough. I always got caught and I always got beat up mm-hmm. on a daily. No, I was always hiding my bruises and my, you know, whatever marks were left on me from my mom. Cause I didn't want her going to school and saying something and, no, when you're a kid, you're worried it'll get worse if that happens. Right. So for me, that was a big priority. Like, no, hopping up my collar and try to pretend like I was being cool, but it was really you no know, covering up bruises, scratches. Um, you know, my my mother, she wasn't uh, wasn't much a parent. She was a single single parent, and uh, it, uh, her her personal life was more important than my any of my livelihood or mm-hmm. uh, no any important factors of childcare. Uh, you know, and I met my my biological father twice. Second time I met him, he dropped me off on the curb sidewalk somewhere in the middle of Milwaukee with all my luggage. Said, "Don't ever write car or visit again." And he drove off. Yikes. I've never seen him since. And so I spent the next I think it was like two hours walking around Milwaukee trying to find my grandmother's house. You know, uh, you know, and you no, know, and and just with my military career, you know, I was constantly trying to rise to the top. I was always trying to look for that next approach by doing going above and beyond the call of duty and i always had a super i was like oh you think you're going to rise above me you, you know every, you know i know i know how everybody feels about you they want to see you succeed but you know what i'm not going to have you outshine me i'm gonna make sure you never get promoted you know mm-hmm. i had to deal with that a lot and so for this i think that's why this this endeavor is so important to me this this success of these books i, I want to win so bad mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think and not in a that, conceited or, or yeah, I, yeah. I know I don't I don't care about becoming rich or you know, living in, in a mansion. I, I, mm-hmm. I wanna I wanna just have this whims like I did it. I did no people know what Gates of Divinity. I don't even care if they know my name, just as long as the the name Gates of is on their lips say, Oh man, did you did you read Gates of Divinity? Or you no, know, God forbid if it gets turned into a t- a movie series or a movie and like, it's like mm-hmm. just a, hear people talking about it, she's like and I can look at him. It's like, we did it, man. Yeah. It was so hard. It was so hard, but we did it, you know. And for me, you know, I've I've had no. I, I'll definitely say this, I've had lots of little successes, but more in my adulthood, not so much, you no, know, in my youth. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you know, and and once once I realized I was strong enough to to do something about, it, you know, to stand up against my bullies, stand up against the abuse and neglect within my families, you know. Uh, I'm I'm Native American and Asian, and neither one of my races accept me. I'm a pariah. You know? mm-hmm. uh, my Native American side says, "Your blood's dirty with Asian blood. You can't be part of the tribe, and you can't get any benefits." Mm-hmm. You know, whereas the rest of my family, they get free college, they get free money. Me, no, absolutely not. You're not one of us. And uh, well, and I told you what my dad said. So I have no, no uh, interaction with Asian side of my my heritage. So. I'm on my own. I've always been on my own. I've, I don't get handouts. I never have. Mm-hmm. I've had to do everything myself. You know what? But that's okay, though. That's okay. You know, if anything, it's made me more headstrong, more vigilant. I was like, hey, I know I'm not going to get handouts, and it's not going to get done unless I do it. And this book, I feel, is a prime example that I, we're doing it. We're not sitting on our hands. And me and him, we just have some for ourselves. So, yeah. Like, they can't take it away exactly. or anyone can yeah. take it away. No, and, and especially the first two books, they've are, they're already out there. Mm-hmm. You can't stop it anymore. Mm-hmm. Now it's just a matter of just getting the word out. And, and that's something we're working as we speak. You know? Yes. <laughs> thanks, literally, <laughs> yeah. thanks yeah. to you guys being so gracious to have Aww. us on your show. Uh, I can't, mm-hmm. and, and, and I like saying, maybe that sheds light on to you guys how much this means to me because, and how grateful I am for your kindness of having us here. I, I just, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it it maybe it's not that big deal, but it is to me. Oh, <laughs> pleasure is all ours. <laughs> we're at, we're, we're all crying over here. <laughs> oh. No, I need to cry. Hope you enjoy because yeah, we're turning things around. Well, yeah, the toy is cozy corner. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a happy outcome. You oh, know? Yes. And, and it kind of ties into our next question mm-hmm. because 
Oh, uh, it's Shelby's turn to ask well, the question. No, you ask. Okay, fine. I jumped the gun on <laughs> yes. it. Yes. But your we're, transition. We're talking about dreams and like achieving it and mm-hmm. and stuff. So if our next question is, if time and money were no object, what's your dream project? And I, you might already be doing it, but what what else? I was looking forward to this question. Okay, <laughs> let's go. As soon as you said time and money, not an object, and yeah, that is something we. Uh, we, it's a battle. we we yeah. often talk about like oh man could you imagine if we didn't have to work every day we yeah. could work you know this was our full time job mm-hmm. uh, essentially that is you know would be you know time money were no object being able to work in this full time <clears throat> would be you know uh like the dream job mm-hmm. and, and you know mm-hmm. like they say you know if if it's something you like doing you you'll never work a day in your life right and mm-hmm. you know we both come to find like wow this is really what we were meant to do this is what we are put on this planet for is to do. And um, yeah, if we were able to do that with, you know, without time and money being in any, in any sort of uh, object. Yeah. Definitely writing full time. And, you know, uh, as Toy mentioned too, it, would we enjoy seeing this as a feature length movie series or something on, on a streaming service? Absolutely. And that's, you know, that is, uh, what we kind of aim for and i know it's a big goal and it's you know mm-hmm. might be shooting for the stars but uh you know with the way we write it and like i said we write it as if we're imagining it in happening as a movie or in a scene mm-hmm. that we feel like it could very well you know be adapted that way. so that is you know a end game goal would be mm-hmm. that so time and money no object full steam ahead with that oh, absolutely nice. see it on hbo miniseries yes. maybe yeah, yeah, or like, netflix like, you yeah. know, the last of us, but you know, it's yeah. the gates to it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you're getting paid <laughs> and no more writer's strike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, perfect oh. world scenario, no strikes going on. Everyone's, you know, fairly getting paid yes. and you know, we're, mm-hmm. we're a part of the process yes. with that. So, you know, we're, we're all for, we're all for uh, supporting that. So, oh, well, oh, I, yeah. I don't think that's too pie in the sky. I think that's oh. something that, you know, it, it has to happen. Yeah. They, they got to film something. Right. Talking right. About pie again. Oh, man, I brought up pie. I'm really hungry. I love pie. I, you know, I, I feel <laughs> pie could uh, bring about world peace if we just got it out mm. to all yep. the all the cultures out there, all the countries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just quickly turn into a pie, pie podcast. Yeah. International I'm free pie it. day. <laughs> all wars would stop for people. If on, you were like, pie pie. on March 14th. March, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Word. Oh, awesome. So yeah, I I like how you're kind of on that track still and um um just you you're on your way to achieving those dreams and goals. So yay, yay. yay. <laughs> so moving right along to our next question here. Um it is uh what it as I trip over my own <laughs> oh, words no. I'm trying to ask this question. Gosh. Take um two. yes. <laughs> Uh, what is the funniest comment you've heard about your writing or your art you know, or anything like that? Uh, we, just we, funny stories. We, yeah. We've had a few, mm-hmm. and, okay. but uh, I will defer. I think the funniest one we've had was uh, was right off the bat, one of our earliest readers, and I'm going to let Toy have this because it's his sister-in-law, but it oh, is, gotcha. it's probably yeah. our best it, one. It's, it's funny because <laughs> this was something we discussed in the, at, at work today. He's like, you have to tell this yeah. story. This okay. yeah. we, <laughs> okay, we have a so, few, but this is the so best as soon, uh, as soon as we finished writing the first book, before we went into the publishing process, you know, we we selected a, a couple people to, to read first just because we wanted an opinion first. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. And one of those people we selected was my sister-in-law. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, quick backstory here and she's 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 a catholic woman devout catholic god-fearing woman oh. goes to church yeah. every sunday i'm gonna put a pause on your story real quick just because it's gonna sound weird without any context if they don't know the story right so the the quick synopsis of the first book mm-hmm. is uh you know after lucifer's defeat in the first war of heaven uh in the scriptures he's you know banished to the pits of hell for a thousand years and then from that he's you know sent to the lake of fire for eternity. There's nothing in between that, so we fill in that in between. Uh, long before, I won't go on too long here, but the yeah, first no, book, <laughs> the first book, he's released from the pits of hell. He's had that thousand years. He wants the plan for revenge. So he wants the second war in heaven. So he's released, starts that out. A group of angels goes to get proof because the higher, like this, the archangel's like, no, we beat him once, we'll do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, so the prime antagonist for the story is Lucifer. He's aiming to rebuild his armies, uh, gather troops and going straight for heaven one more one more time he's had enough plan 
uh, time to plan and he's got a secret weapon i won't give away a spoiler mm-hmm. but you you find out right away what that secret weapon is that he thinks he's like got this unlock mm-hmm. um so he's he's doing that the group of angels are trying to find the evidence to you know hey heaven we should probably do something here mm-hmm. um so before Toy carries on i just need to point out that lucifer is the antagonist of this story oh okay. yeah um, <laughs> and and the thing is like <laughs> if anyone knows it, anything it, about it, lucifer I mean, dream, yeah, that's kind yeah, of his yeah. job is it's to be the yeah. antagonist and, 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 and during, in form of entertainment he's never historically he's never the good guy right yeah and, <laughs> and during his journey in the first book you know he's not everything he does is not a success no all right okay. so yeah, no, yeah. We, nothing comes one of the nothing cliches comes removed easy. we know we remove the cliche that no all celestials are uh impervious to, to, to failure and mm. disappointment no they have to struggle just like humans yeah. do despite okay. the mm-hmm. devoid of human element we have in our story the the struggles are very humanly relatable okay okay cool. but anyway okay, so okay, i got to so, get that backstory yeah just this, i'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad he i'm glad he gave that yeah. context that's actually very important to know <laughs> if you don't know the on. book you probably like huh yeah. Who so, cares if she's religious? I'm, I'm glad i'm glad he yeah. gave that context he's he's right that is very important yeah. so anyways uh i no i i give her i i i send her a copy of the, of the book uh uh, 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 uh in a word document mm-hmm. and she reads it but I say it was about a week later, or a week and a half later. You know, she's on the. My wife was talking to her sister, and uh, she asked my wife, "Like, is your husband home?" She's like, yeah, why? She's like, "I need to talk to him." Uh oh. And she's like, "Oh, oh, yeah." She's not thinking anything of it. Yeah. <laughs> Seems innocent enough. And she said, "Hey, uh, my sister wants to talk to you." I'm like, oh, cool. Like, maybe she wants to talk. To you. Hey, man, I wonder what she has to say. Yeah. And oh man, as soon as I put the phone, she makes sure I'm on phone. She's like, "Hey." Uh, you there? Like, oh, hey, how's it going? And she's like, okay, good. I got you on the phone. <laughs> like, you, you're a terrible, terrible person. Oh, no. Like, Excuse me? She's like, yeah. Like, oh, you made me feel like the worst. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. What did I do? She's like, oh, yeah, I read your book. I read your book. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I read oh, your oh, book. Like, oh, <laughs> was the writing terrible? Oh, no, the writing was fine. Like, so oh, what's okay. the problem? She's like, you had me rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, get, I get it now. Oh, oh, Devout Catholic, she is rooting for the bad guy. Oh, and, my gosh. She's like, she's like, You're How dare you? Yeah. And, 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 and I was like, okay. And, I, and that's all you hear is like, okay. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. That's a, turned out to right. be a good review. Right. Yeah, we're start. We're we're doing something. She thought right she was here. gonna bad review, but for me, it was like a tickle fest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Who else didn't you? Who else did you like? <laughs> Sympathy for the devil, literally. <laughs> Star, starts playing. <laughs> Get that song now. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, well, that brings us to our last question. You guys are ready? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what are, we've kind of talked about this already, but mm-hmm. what are some of your thoughts about the local art or the local author community and, you know, ways to improve needs? We talked about Kenosha Book Festival is a good thing. Yeah. What do you think? I, I guess, see, uh, as far as like uh, first impressions go, because, you know, obviously this, I mean, we've been doing this for a little bit. It still falls under the umbrella of being a new experience for us because, you no. Know, We've been doing this only a couple of years, so I'd say you know we still fall under that newness of being amateurs. But right. as far as our interaction with the uh, the local artistic community, I gotta tell you, it's I'm blown away about how great everybody is. I mean, like you know, it's like cause I don't know, I'm not sure about him, but I know for me, stepping in, I think, oh, this is our competition. We've got to really outshine these guys. You know, they're gonna <laughs> they're probably gonna try to bring me down. But like, yeah. it was the total opposite. Like, oh, hey, you know. No, I'll tell my friends about your book too. Like, hey, can I have your your bookmark? I was like, what? You're not trying to destroy me? <laughs> you put your guard up. Be like, oh, you're not trying to fight. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I mean, the local uh, author and artist community. I I, I gotta. I want to. You know what? I want to give a shout out to them. And, uh, and I apologize because I'm terrible with names. It's but, true. Uh, yeah. But I remember. The, I, I I remember all their faces, and I got mm-hmm. to meet some amazing authors. And some amazing artists during a lot, a lot of these events, and I got—I I mean, I'm sorry if I can't remember, but <laughs> you know, you know, you know, if if we had an interaction, I, I guess, which is a lot of you, mm-hmm. I want to say you're all amazing, and I th- don't don't quit, don't stop, oh. no matter how hard it gets. <laughs> no, we're all walking this journey together, and you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with supporting each other. I think that's awesome, and please, 
keep up the good spirit and keep up the positivity and bring that awesome energy wherever you go because you know what you no know, as 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 you hit more successes whether little ones or big ones people are going to remember your face and as long as you keep on portraying that good energy you'll always be in the light you know and it's mm -hmm. just a matter of time before the right eyes see you and hey if you hey if you get to the finish line hey send it on let us know what it's like <laughs> the rest of us want to know, the the rest want to know what it's yeah. like you know yes. and, uh, and we'll do the same no if we if we ever hit that finish line we hit that goal we're definitely going to give a shout out to all of Kenosha, yeah. to all the town others. Say, hey, you guys got to cross that finish line and join us. You no, know, we'll have a big barbecue and, out and talk <laughs> yeah. about our books. You know, yeah, yeah you know? definitely. Uh, Kenosha is uh, as far as I mean, I've lived here most of my life, at least most of my life that I can remember. Oh, gotcha. Um, <laughs> uh, I was a Navy brat till I was four, so oh. uh, up until that point. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it, there's always been a strong art community in in Kenosha, um, but I feel like it's really hit its stride in the last few years. And I don't want to say it's coincidental or, uh, you know, I've not <laughs> without mm -hmm. conceit, but, you know, it kind of felt like as soon as we started our endeavor, mm -hmm. things really started picking up. Mm -hmm. um, like, I know you guys have been here for a while, mm -hmm. but then there's been more festivals or like the Harbor Market has picked up. Mm -hmm. um, the book festival, like things have really started like, gaining steam. Like it, you kind of feel like that, that old school, um, entertainment factor of of art and writing mm -hmm. just everything that is under that umbrella of art like there's so much to, that is under that umbrella that you really feel like that's starting to kind of make it start to be cool again yeah. To, yeah. To, <laughs> yes. you know you're not one of the like the weird people that are you know drawing on your notebook in the corner which i was in study hall and mm -hmm. you know now it's like oh no come bring your stuff here yeah. you know yeah, they'll show yeah. the world and, and so that's i think it's only gotten better and again even with the film festival that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier, the Port of Fear Festival, that's that's uh, second time this year, um, and in a much better and a much better month too mm -hmm. than last year. Uh, it, it's just exciting that you know these things are starting to get more of a spotlight, and, and then starting to get more of a spotlight to Kenosha, where it's not seen as just uh, oh that little town in between you know Chicago and Milwaukee. It's like mm -hmm. oh no, Kenosha's its own thing. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I think that community is just getting bigger and. Like Toy said, you know, it was, you know, especially coming from wrestling where, you know, you're constantly being judged by your peers, like, oh, you know, follow that. It's more like it's been very warm and an embrace, you know, embraceful. Like he said, just everyone's just like, oh, what's yours about? You know, mm -hmm. I have a collection of bookmarks from all of our other authors that, you know, <laughs> I, I'm really proud to show off like, oh, I met these people. So, you know, if they get, like he said, if they get to the finish line before, I was like, oh, I knew them before. Yeah. you know yeah uh so i, I just uh, again so many so many other authors that we've met um that just too many to name and uh and i don't want to forget anyone but you know if you're listening you know who you are oh, and yes. I, I definitely appreciate um your your warmth and compassion and you know bringing us in and as you know equals and um let's just all do it oh you know? yay yeah that's what i like to hear yes <laughs> and um we're kind of seeing like um the results of the pandemic and being yes. kind of locked away for a little <laughs> and um it was a rough start to restart that engine but i think um with that pause and what we've took taken away from all of that um yeah we're just kind of going full force yeah. everyone's got the energy and um they're gonna do everything big and yeah. fabulous so we really appreciate the I'm energy all of it yeah yeah, yeah. so I think that's fabulous. I don't even have to say a rising tide lifts all ships because Al said it already. Yes. So there. <laughs> it's, so, it's so true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and I guess I dare say like like especially when it comes to Kenosha, and it, I'm very fond of this city. I mean, mm -hmm. I I really go into it. And and, and uh, <laughs> it's funny because Kenosha is the longest I've ever lived anywhere in my life. I've oh, lived wow. like all over the planet. <laughs> you know. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I do have days when I get wanderlust really bad because I'm so oh, yeah. used mm -hmm. to moving around so much you know, mm -hmm. throughout my life. You know? But Kenosha, I've never lived anywhere longer than I have in Kenosha. And, but I got to say, like, you know, even when there, there's discussions at home about, hey, you know, can we move somewhere else? No, it's like, we've been here a long time. Because you know, that's just, that's mm -hmm. just been a, a, yeah. a habit yeah. for me and for both me and my wife. We've, We've moved around so much. I've lived in all four time zones. I've lived all over Europe. <laughs> oh wow. goodness! You know, I've traveled all over Europe. I've I've been to to you know 
all kinds of places, mm -hmm. different continents. And, and, uh, for me, it's like, you know, the, the thing I have something really huge to compare this to it, like somewhere where I'm accepted mm -hmm. and I belong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been here long enough to, or uh, no, it's it's not unusual to run to someone I know, like hey, and they and they light up when they see me, as opposed mm -hmm. to being chased and yeah. and oh, abused. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like it, it, Kenosha has been a great home for me. Oh, you know? and and I like because we're we're not in a big city like Chicago mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Milwaukee or New York. Like, you know, I mean, Kenosha has grown tremendously since I moved here, and I'm I'll be honest, I'm not crazy about big business. Moves. Is I feel like when I first moved here, it was the little is the little mom and pop is that was the real romance of this city, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and but you know there's still some still holding on, and my prayers are with them. I I, mm -hmm. I want us to hold on to that, you know, uh, but I love that I can literally call Kenosha my home. You know? and, and 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 if this isn't a little bit irony, mm -hmm. I was actually born in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Oh okay, and. Sorry, Milwaukee, but I tell people you guys are an armpit of a city. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. And people go like, people go like Controversy oh, 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 yeah? Here. Where are you from? Where were you born? I, here. Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, <laughs> I like to think that the fact that I was born there gives me the right to be able to have that opinion. Yeah. You know, if you weren't born in Milwaukee, hey, you don't talk about my city that way. <laughs> Only people that are born there can say that, you know? The opinions <laughs> expressed here do not necessarily <laughs> reflect the Art Space podcast. No, again, apologies, Mark. <laughs> apologies, but I, I, I know. No, no, you're good. <laughs> you know, sorry, Milwaukee, you know, like, but Kenosha is where my heart is. You know, I may have been born in, in, in your womb, but yeah. Kenosha is where I, where I, where I, where I, is where, where I call home. Aww. Well, that's, that's a great way Aww, to tie that's... a bow on this episode. Yes. As we, uh, wrap things up uh it's usually yes. shelby that does this part yes as we're wrapping things up but um flustered yeah um where can people find you and your wonderful novel oh well uh i guess this is my part yeah yeah uh, yes this we're uh question for Al. yeah we're we're everywhere uh social media you name it uh you can look up me my name um <laughs> Uh, on everything or gates divinity and if you google it it's like the first you know dozen or so searches it'll bring you okay. uh or you can look on our uh website uh gates of dash divinity.com um everything will be on there too but we're uh um again shout out to donovan uh he does carry our books in store as well uh nice. and then um you can find us at the book festival last two chapters as we discussed chapter five is august 27th uh the final chapter uh, six in September, the last Sunday, the twenty fourth. The twenty fourth. Thank you. Somebody did the research. Yes. I looked it up. <laughs> Bless your heart. Um, and then we also uh, will be a vendor in the Spooky Market. I don't know if we're if that's been announced yet or um, uh, like specifically. I don't know if they've really oh. released the vendors or not. So this might be a spoiler warning. Yeah. Well, you know, thanks for listening this yes. late, long into the episode. Yeah. You, yeah. you get yeah, you we, get rewarded with yeah, a spoiler. We, yeah, we kind of <laughs> we we kind of took your. Uh, uh, took, took you guys on a ride here it's okay but anyway it was a fun um, ride. <laughs> but you should check out the porter fear film festival regardless of that but we will be uh, um you know uh potentially we may or may not be uh who knows Ooh. we may or not be Wait. yeah yes. that's, but, that's um, a good way to but do the, it. the spooky market does sound like a lot of fun um so mm -hmm. if, if you do know someone who's a vendor there with books or whatever it right. should be a good time uh <laughs> the kenosha public library is uh planning um author best to the 30th which might be a bad timing but uh, mm -hmm. that uh, potentially if there are enough interested um individuals will be a part of that as well mm -hmm. um let's see what else we got going on that was september 30th yes so that's also when the the, the spooky market uh, yes the port of fear is yeah going. Um, nothing september. confirmed on that yet but um potentially maybe you know, yeah uh, keep an eye out for that. Well, but it's definitely when it's happening. Yes. But oh, well, Port of Phil. will yeah. be there. Port of, yeah. Fear, Port of Fear Film Festival definitely is going on yes. that day. The, mm -hmm. the Kenosha Public Library yeah, uh, right, the the event may Saturday. or may not. We're not sure. That's potential. Tentative at best. Gotcha. But we will be um, all over the place. You can find us in Kenosha, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, just look for, you know, guys with long hair wearing a Gates Divinity t-shirts. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, which which we also, you know, uh, we, we make our own swag uh such mm -hmm. as coasters uh stickers ah. pins t-shirts um uh we have our own tea pub uh, tea public store you know Ooh, i nice. constantly putting up uh new designs with 
the cool, newest cool. one will be uh, unveiled uh, upon my upon my person oh. come uh, August twenty seventh. So, okay, gotcha. uh, you know <laughs> it, it'll be um, it'll be Knuff. Gotcha. All, <laughs> okay, you know, it, to give I'm you, intrigued <laughs> to give you a, a bit of a hint, but. Um, yeah, uh, we're available on Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble. Uh, I'm pretty close with uh, the Target people in town, so we were, I was able to get a few of our sneak a few of our copies into Target Ooh. there. Ooh. So, but uh, you know, they're all gone now. So. Oh. <laughs> sorry, but uh, again, uh, yeah, we're everywhere. Just uh, yeah, Google us. Oh, nice. Right. Take a Google search and yeah. um, go find them. But yeah. and as you're Google searching, you can also find us on. Uh, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our very own YouTube channel. So check us out there. And um, you can also find us on social media, um, the, at our Facebook page at the Art Space Podcast, and our Facebook group, The Marvelous Makers and the Art Appreciators, where we post all the cool, fun stuff that's happening in Kenosha and what you can support local artists and local makers um, and then we also have our Instagram at the art space pod. And, um, so yeah, leave us a like comment, review, whatever platform you're on. Yeah. We want to hear um, from you. Yeah. And Jake is still looking for a hater. I, I feel like it, uh, I feel like at this point we should stop trying to get a hater. <laughs> yeah, <he was laughs> you like, keep oh. bringing it up every episode. Yeah. Yeah. You really, <laughs> one time I said, Hey, you know, we should get a hater. And now that's she'll how be you know, you've made You're it. You're probably better like finding a troll. Yeah. Yes. I'll take either. either. Yeah. So <laughs> that's fine. Good luck on that. Interact. Or just be nice to us. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta be, I, preferably. I got to be honest with you, I think you set your sights a little higher. Yeah. <laughs> I think he might be my troll. No. <laughs> Reach for the stars, man. Don't look under bridges. Oh, no. <laughs> oh well, that was... Well, before we go, we want to yes. thank our sponsor, Joseph from Draw Joseph. Yes, thank you. We want to thank Would You Kindly, the band that did our theme song. Mm-hmm. We want to thank... Gates of Divinity, mm -hmm. the rock band. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should start a band named Gates of Divinity. Yeah. Well, in on, your free time, because you got so much free time. That's on. I, you know, not, not, to, not, not to deviate, but um, to be different from other uh, authors and books uh, series, we do have a band in Ohio that is uh, working on a song based on our books. Ooh. Wow. Exciting. Well, wow. Less Than Three is their name. So. Oh, gotcha. Shout out to them. Uh -huh. and, yeah, so we want to thank them, and we thank you, <laughs> thank and you. thank the people at home for uh, for listening. Yes. Thank you for having us. We, this has been a great pleasure. Yes. Oh, well, yay. It. Well, I think that wraps it up for this episode, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Depression, addiction, the thrill that you seek. Our restlessness cages the fire we need. We're here.